Okay, good evening. I see that we have 10 task force members joining us here on the panel, and I'm going to count that as what passes for quorum uh, for our group, and that I expect to be joined by uh, the other three uh, the other three members shortly. Uh, my name is Bill Henry. I'm the controller for Baltimore City and also the uh, chair of the Baltimore Regional Water Governance Task Force. Thank you for joining us tonight for um, our penultimate meeting. Uh, for those of you who have been following since the beginning, uh, this meeting was not part of the original schedule. Uh, we decided to add an additional meeting uh, back in December uh, and uh, the main purpose for this meeting is for the task force members uh, to have more free form opportunity for uh, discussion uh, amongst ourselves about what we've learned um, in the uh, several hours of uh, presentations and uh, public comment that we have received uh, during this process. Um, I think at this point, I'll be turning it over to uh, Mr. Shell uh, from WSP, who will go through the agenda for tonight. Uh, and then we'll be back. Ah, here we go. Well, actually, you know, Brian, if you don't mind, I'll just, I'll, I'll run through this. Uh, we're going to let the consultants from WSP uh, do a summary of the recommendation that came out in the draft report that was uh, released in mid-December. Um, and then in a departure from uh, previous meetings, we're actually gonna break public comment up into two parts. We're gonna have one section of public comment right away so that people uh, have the opportunity to comment on the draft report itself. We've received a number um, of uh, written uh, uh, versions and emails uh, commenting on the draft report, but this will be an opportunity for people who want to uh, speak to the to the task force directly. Uh, then we're going to take about an hour and a half of uh, discussion um, among the task force members. Uh, we'll take the break that we usually take, and then we'll come back for a second round of public comment uh, in case uh, people would like to comment on uh, the items that were raised during the discussion. Uh, and then we will reconvene and uh, hopefully vote on a draft recommendation this evening. Uh, so with that, let me turn it over to Brian Shell and WSP for a summary of their recommendations. Um, Brian, why don't you, you can take the, the notes for the attendees. Sure, yeah, so just as uh, a couple of points of order for those of you who'd like to participate in the uh, virtual public comment, uh, if, if you did this uh, last time, it, it works the same way. We're going to ask that when folks uh, know that they'd like to make comment during that comment period, they use the raise your hand function uh, for the attendees. And if you've connected via a plain telephone, um, you can dial star nine uh, to use the raise your hand function there. And then uh, you'll be invited by the chair. Uh, you may have to unmute yourself. We will promote you to be a panelist for the period of time during which you are providing your comment, which will be limited to two minutes. Uh, so there will be a small delay uh, while Zoom uh, assigns you, you your new privileges and you are uh, able to turn on your camera if you like, et cetera, uh, to mimic the in-person environment as much as possible. And uh, the rest of it will, will work uh, like usual. And this is just a reminder of the past meetings that have taken place and then the uh, last meeting that will take place on the 25th uh, on the same Zoom platform. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. At this time, uh, we'll move into the consultant portion of the presentation this evening. Uh, this will be just a brief overview of the recommendation that was provided in the draft consultant report. Um, first, we'll uh, kind of frame this as uh, there may be some folks who are joining for the for the first time for this meeting. Um, so House Bill 843 
uh, are the instructions to the task force that contain their charge. And uh, what uh, this says is that uh, the charge of the task force is to assess alternative governance structures uh, in order to find uh, a governance model for water and wastewater uh, in the Baltimore region uh, that is best suited uh, and most likely to proceed for implementation um, for the Baltimore region. And that's, a, that's paraphrasing a bit. Uh, House Bill 843 is, is just a few pages long, but as we said before in these meetings, it's important to use it to frame the charge of the task force and recognize you know, what the role of this task force is in selecting a model that should proceed towards considerations for implementation in the future um, and, and recognize what the scope of the inquiry is, is to be. Uh, this just shows you sort of how we've progressed through this process together uh, with, with you and with the public uh, and what we reviewed in each of the uh, five previous meetings and then how we're going to uh, get to the, the last portion, which is the final recommendation from the task force and making that transition from report from the consultant to the task force, making that transition to the report uh, and recommendation that comes from the task force. What we're going to do now is uh, summarize the overall recommendation from the report, um, the consultant report. Uh, which was to select Model E and, and commit sufficient resources to resolve threshold issues. And I'm going to turn it over now to Neil Callahan, who will summarize that recommendation. Neil, your line's muted. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, the, the recommendation <clears throat> in the re draft report is that um, the Model E is, is, is a very common model among the city and, and regions that we researched uh, that represent, um, you know, populations similar to the Baltimore region. And in terms of the areas for improvement that were identified and highlighted in the new general report, um, we, we certainly felt that he holds the greatest promise. And in summarizing a good deal of uh, what's in the report, um, the um, special district or authority provides an opportunity to optimize and reorganize and improve operations that can address the high turnover issues, um, most definitely can improve interjurisdictional coordination, talk a little bit more about that later, uh, allow for documentation of standard procedures uh, and, and benefit from the result and efficiency gains. Um, important factors are there is a, a, a better economy of scale, it'll support employee recruitment and allow greater flexibility to hire and retain new and existing uh, employees, um, as well as to be able to train uh, and present skill development opportunities. Uh, probably the most significant area that it held substantial um, differences from some of the other uh, models looked at is the ability to not just overcome, but basically eliminate institutional barriers and boost the coordination that really is needed to improve uh, the entire customer facing aspects of the utility, all of the capital planning, certainly emergency planning, uh, and provide long term rate stability. Uh, in essence, the, the single purpose regional utility uh, should have the, the focus and have removed the institutional barriers that would allow the region to operate cooperatively. Uh, next slide. The summary of the recommendations, um, as Brian said, is delivering the benefits of Model E at, you know, at the, to the extent that they have been looked at, present some significant writs in terms of you know, impacts on the community, and the economic impacts, and they need to be thoroughly evaluated during the implementation. Um, the first is the determination on, on what the ability to do debt re or whether de debt refinancing will be needed. Um, that was you know, indicated to be a, a large number or potentially a large number if there were debt refinancing, but there were clearly opportunities that uh, presented themselves that said debt refinancing may not be necessary. Um, resolution of how pensions will be transitioned to the new entity. 
that whole issue is is something that will have to be addressed such that you know all of the existing stakeholders are uh, protected and dealt with fairly and the determination of the policies and strategies for the asset lease and facility use again not to you know the getting into the what the asset lease would involve and how the facilities joint facilities would be used are um, quite a, just a subject unto itself. So working that out um, would be extremely important and developing of an equity assessment as is based in the bill, equity and affordability are part of the requirements in the bill and are just necessary to be worked out um, prior to the transition. Therefore, <clears throat> the approach to the transition focuses uh, I think now on some key elements the creation of a dedicated professional work group and a city county water advisory committee to oversee the transition, further evaluation of the threshold issues by the work group and the committee, an improvement of the existing governance structure while the further evaluation of the transition to Model E is conducted, which certainly could take several years. And Brian, next slide, please. Well, Mr. Chair, we've uh, finished the consultant uh, recommendation summary. Uh, would you like to go ahead and open this for public comment this time? Yes, let's go ahead and see if we have uh, any public comment at this time. And keep in mind, I can't see that. <laughs> so I'm relying on, on Brian or Neil or someone else from WFP uh, to tell me verbally uh, that we have somebody uh, from the public who would like to speak. Well, I'm not seeing any raised hands as yet. Uh, oh, now I see uh, Mr. Wheaton has raised his hand. I'm going to promote him to a panelist now. Okay, so just unmute yourself when you're ready. All right, thank you so much for uh, allowing me to have a uh, public comment. I did want to just uh, address a few topics. One, uh, just very concerned uh, that uh, this draft does not reflect anything that was uh, stated in the questions that task force members had uh, at the last task force meeting. Uh, this report reflects only a consultant's uh, view, and it was kind of funneled and put out to the public that this was the recommendation of this task force, and to have no uh, none of the concerns that were voiced in the last meeting, a part of that draft was very, very concerning. And again, I, I'm, I'm going to uh, keep kind of bringing up some of the same points of uh, making sure that we are doing a racial equity and economic equity assessment before we are picking what is, is the right governance model. Uh, again, there needs to be some type of feasibility study to even see if this is uh, doable economically uh, from the city's perspective and uh, for ratepayers' perspective. If rates are gonna go up as they did in Detroit, then I think the task force members should really take a second look at other governance models that would not affect ratepayers as much, especially our low-income ratepayers. Um, and so I, I just was really, really concerned uh, that the draft report just did not reflect anything that was talked about at the last meeting. There was a lot of task force members that had lots of questions, uh, did not think that Model E was the best way to go. And for the draft report to still say that Model E was the best decision, I think was very, uh, put a lot of distrust in this process because what the public heard from task force members was not reflected in the choice of Model E. There was, again, many task force members uh, who had difference of opinions and did not want Model E. Um, and so uh, that's that's the end of my public comment here. All right, thank you, David. Let me, uh, I also wanna thank you for, for starting us off with uh, that point um, because there was a, a, a fair amount of uh, public discussion uh, about that after the, the draft report was released. And I think this is a, a fine time to, to clarify that um, WFP and the consultants, uh, they were retained to uh, provide assistance and support to the task force. And so uh, one of the aspects of that is they're the ones physically writing our report and our recommendations uh, for us. So 
what was released uh, in mid-December was uh, WST's draft of the report that they're giving to us. And that draft recommendation was a draft of their recommendation to the task force. Um, as noted by the fact that at that meeting, the task force did not vote to accept um, the preliminary version of the draft recommendation um, at our last public meeting. Uh, and, and there was a, a fair amount of discussion from task force members um, expressing their issues. Um, it, I, I, I just want to make that clarification. Um, I, I, I would also note um, just in almost in passing that the task force members received that draft report on the same day that it was shared with the public and, and, and posted, um, which I think is uh, another way to exemplify that it was a, a draft to the task force as opposed to a draft of the task force. Um, so, so David, I, I, I speak on behalf of the, the task force when I say we appreciate your comments, but I hope that this, uh, this clarification um, uh, provides a little bit more uh, light uh, when it comes to how we're going to move forward. Um, I, I know that I'm, I'm going to be offering each of the task force members an opportunity to, um, to share their thoughts. Uh, I, I'm not going to start that other than to uh, ask if task force members all had a chance to receive and review um, a, uh, I'll call it a, a rewrite or perhaps a, uh, a second draft of the recommendation that I would, um, I would ask the task force to consider tonight. Did anybody not receive that over the weekend uh, before today's meeting? Um, if, if you did not, please raise your hand and let me know so we can make sure that Brian can send you a copy right now. Um, but if everybody got that, then my hope is um, depending on how the, the free forum discussion goes at the beginning, maybe we can use that as sort of a focus for what we want to see in our draft recommendation from the task force. Um, and so with that, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down the line with task. Oh, I'm sorry. I checked to see were there any other public comments because we still have a chunk of time set aside at the beginning. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Jamar uh, L oh, has oh. their name, their hand up. So if yeah, you stand if you, by, I can. Um, you'll, you'll promote um, Jamar, and I think that means you can return David. Uh, back to being a viewer. Yes, sir. Hello, can you all hear me? We can. Hi, thank you, uh, Chairman Henry and Mr. Shell. Uh, my name is Jomar Lloyd, and on behalf of Food and Water Watch and our 26,000 members and supporters in the Baltimore City and Baltimore County area, we urge you to reject the draft report's recommendation of a regional authority, and instead, we ask you to recommend improving the intermunicipal agreements and creating a joint city-county water advisory committee. As you are aware, we've argued since the inception of this task force that a predetermined outcome to establish a new water authority was decided for the task force before it even began. The consultant, the consultant provided no evidence or data to justify the recommendation of an authority. At the last meeting, we stated that it's been clear that the, that the consultants are directed that are directing the task force to choose the regional authority model as a top choice, even though the same basic legal and economic questions remain unanswered, and there's still little to no actual proof that an authority would actually resolve the issues the system currently has. We are extremely stunned and disappointed to see the consultants release the draft report in December without having shared with the task force members, nor incorporating any of the concerns and doubts that the authority 
about the authority that had been shared by members at the very last meeting. It was truly mind blowing. You also didn't share that the second draft with the report with the public before the meeting. The creation of a new water authority poses significant risk and harms for residents and workers. Turning control of a regional authority would result in $2 billion in transaction costs to refinance existing debt, cover lease payments, and provide the workers retirements. It could lead to a massive water bill hikes, water shutoffs, water privatization, loss of public accountability, and loss of potentially thousands of unionized positions within the city and county government. We provided a full research memo and analysis in written form to you all. But I'll finish my comments by saying that the state legislator gave you an unreasonable task. You have, you have had insufficient time and information to assess alternative government governing models. That is why the only reasonable recommendation is one that would improve the existing frame, framework with a joint advisory committee to provide additional opportunity for study, deliberation, public engagement, and oversight of regional system operations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jamar. Uh, looking to see here. Um, yeah, okay. Um, thank you, Brian. Um, are there any other uh, public comments? I don't see any hands at this time, Mr. Chair. Okay, I think then we can uh, return Joe Mar to, uh, to to viewer status. And uh, at this point, I think we can move on to task force discussion. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, I want to start off just by offering uh, task force members an opportunity to share their thoughts. Uh, their thoughts may be. Uh, reactions to what they've heard in public comment. It could be uh, comprehensive in terms of reactions to uh, the uh, the entire uh, task force process to date. It could be additional questions that uh, they uh, feel uh, they need answers to. Um, whatever you would like to share with the rest of uh, your compatriots, this is an opportunity. And we'll be starting uh, with Mr. Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me? I can. So uh, I want to first thank the members that we just heard from, uh, but also the members over the course of these four months that uh, have shown up and uh, presented and, and, and participated in this process. So I, I, I know I, I speak on behalf of the members of the task force. We appreciate the engagement and um, the the words and the and the information that you guys and concerning you shared. Obviously, the water system uh, it it doesn't get any more important than when we're talking about uh, the water system for a major municipal city uh, from a public health perspective. And so, I know members of the task force took this uh, solemn responsibility very 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 seriously. I think one of one of the things I want to I want to highlight. I know, Mr. Chair, we'll get into some of the actual work and, and spend some of our time tonight um, pouring in and, and, and get into a better result with uh, what will be the ultimate recommendation. I think what you laid out earlier was very important. Uh, the, the report that was posted for the public was uh, not final. It was a draft that should be reacted to uh, and will ultimately be adjusted and changed uh, as this body deems fit, uh, certainly taking into account public comment. Um, the risk factor that we saw on one of the slides previously uh, gives me, I think, a great deal of, of pause. I think whenever we're going into a situation of recommend making a recommendation, uh, but there are really foundational risk factors that are left um, un, unexplored in any kind of uh, way that that would that would that would uh, give us some comfort uh, is a big is a big one for me, and so. A uh, little disappointed that over the course of four months, we couldn't dig in a little bit more. Uh, consultancy with WSP couldn't dig in a little bit more to some of those pieces that we've, we've talked about now for, I think, at least several meetings that spanned over a couple months. And so I think we have an opportunity to dig into some of that today and, and in the work that's going to be before we get to the final recommendation at the end of this month. Uh, but we've got we've to get to a better place with uh, some of the concerns around the, the lease financing, debt restructuring, and pension uh, liabilities, to name just a few. And so I, I know I, I want to spend um, a considerable amount of time over the next few weeks getting to a, a better place in terms of the 
the recommendation because as it stands right now, uh, we've just got, I think, too many outstanding questions, at least for me, I can only speak for me, too many outstanding questions um, to, to really be able to, to, um, to, to feel comfortable uh, with, with, uh, with where we are. So um, with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and yield so that the next member can talk, because I know I, I want to get into to, to the heart and the meat of, of some of the work that we've got ahead of us still. Thank you. Uh, in that case, uh, we will go next to Dr. Mitchell. Miss, Mr. Chair, if possible, could you um, uh, defer me to later on? I am in transit oh, and would gotcha. be at my workstation in about 10 minutes. So if you can defer uh, uh, me to later on, that, that, would, that would be more optimal. I, I am I'm happy to accommodate. We will come back to you. Uh, in that case, we're going next to uh, Mr. Moran. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, and I appreciate the uh, comments uh, from uh, the public on this. Um, a couple of things. One is, um, again, I, I go back to something that was mentioned earlier by um, uh, the consultants, and it said that, you know, option E was the uh, most logical option considering every uh, different uh, option they looked at and similar um, uh, for similar sort of uh, uh, situations that we're in. But, you know, I, I, I don't think that's accurate. I, I, you know, the reality is if you look at the vast majority of cities, municipalities that are um, in control of their water, um, uh, there's very few, if any of them, uh, not very few, there's very few, sorry, that are run by an authority. Um, the majority of them are run by uh, the municipalities themselves. So I don't know why we are glued to that. Um, I understand the convenience for some folks, but um, we're talking about a, um, a huge uh, uh, commodity here that belongs to uh, the people of Baltimore. Um, second of all, I mean, for the short term, I understand uh, what the recommendations are in this, and I think um, there's some <clears throat> ways that we can work uh, together to accomplish these things. I think the city has broken things out before, uh, whether that's uh, general services or um, I, I think it's, uh, it's one of the best examples and it's made that work. Um, but, you know, I, I would feel more comfortable if, if we had things such as a rate board where uh, we've seen that in other municipalities across the country that help establish rates, make more equitable rates um, uh, between the different users, um, whether that's the county and the city or, or uh, between the counties. And, um, uh, you know, to get a better handle on what's going on right now. But, you know, in the long term, I just don't uh, see how an authority is going to um, play out given the huge economic um, <clears throat> and other aspects of, of that deal um, that are at stake here. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, next, we will move on to Ms. Powell. Certainly, thank you, Chair, um, for the opportunity. And I too want to thank um, those that have given public comment and um, have followed this process. Um, I also wanna thank uh, my colleagues on the task force for um, the questions and uh, the discussion that we have had. Um, I, in reading uh, the report, um, I, I'm just going to build on some of the comments that have already been said because many of mine would be similar. So I just want to uh, provide some clarifying things that I've raised before. Uh, and I, I agree with the concern that the report does not reflect some of the feedback and comments um, that have been made. Um, I think one of the comments that was made very early on in this process is that we are um, using governance structure and governance agreements interchangeably. 
And that is one of the things that has not allowed us to really see the governance structures or governance models that exist that could potentially uh, provide the improvements. One of the governance structures that was not included, it was referenced as an intermunicipal agreement, I think, was the municipal utility structure. And that would either be uh, a municipal utility structure that is a standalone agency or part of another agency like a DPW. Um, and in, because of this, it hasn't allowed us to really vet the different ways of improving in the areas outlined in the House bill related to that structure. Um, in addition to a special district or an authority um, or any other structure. Um, the examples of utilities that were used in the matrix, uh, which was another comment made, are not truly peer utilities. And uh, I, I do believe that there was a request to include peer utilities that are of similar size and scope. Um, it doesn't really make sense to compare to a cooperative for a smaller utility that serves less than, uh, much less uh, population than the city of Baltimore's utility serves. Um, I also wanted to um, make a clarifying point um, in, in relation to something that was raised, I think around uh, the discussion of a charter change, um, which was, which is that an authority if that is the ultimate recommendation, um, is not equivalent to privatization. DC Water and WSSC Water are both in the region and they are authorities and they are public utilities. Um, the DC Water and WSSC Water are governed by boards um, of different constructs but they are public utilities and they are more similar in size and scope. Uh, and I think that the, the eight criteria that were listed in the House bill, um, it, we could stand to vet um, for similar size and scope utilities, those particular factors. Um, I also wanted to really clarify that the city of Baltimore owns and operates and has the fiduciary responsibilities related to um, this utility. And we've been talking about regionalization, but regionalization actually happened in 1924 in a manner of speaking. Um, and at this point, moving forward, we should take the full history of the city's uh, water system and utility in account not just the last 75 years um, as we move forward in making decisions. And I do think before any recommendation can be made, there has to be um, some analysis of any unintended negative consequences. There also has to be an analysis of the various risks, financial, legal, otherwise, as well as um, the focus on equity and justice, which was a request in our pre-meeting, uh, which has not been discussed, uh, and, and as important, workforce, which has also not been discussed. Um, so as we move forward, I'm hoping that the recommendation that we put forward takes all of these things into account. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Back takes us to uh, Ms. Buckler. Good evening. Um, I, I do want to second what some of the other task force members have said about really appreciating the public comment that we have received. I think something that hasn't come forward well in these conversations is the dynamic shift between the city and the county and what these populations really look like today. So we're standing at about 830,000 in the county, but not all of that population uses the water and wastewater system because we still have population on septic system, on wells in the county. So of that population, about 707,000 
use the water and wastewater metropolitan system compared to the 564,000 in Baltimore City. When you look at those within the poverty limits, which also keeps coming up, is that we be equitable. We need to be equitable for all users of this system. And we need to be equitable and safe for all users of this system. So when we look at those poverty numbers, we're looking at 12% for Baltimore County, 84,000 people, 84,000 people in Baltimore County do not have access to the equity programs that the city residents have. So looking at a regionalization approach, we need to look at all of the users of this system equitably. We need to look at all of the workers in this system equitably. It is a regionalized system, as Keisha pointed out, from the 1924 agreements. We're all drinking the same water from that system, and it should be safe for everyone. We started these meetings talking about how the status quo wasn't working. That's why we're having this task force. That's why there was this legislation. So just saying we can keep the status quo because we have unanswered questions doesn't move the needle for equity or safety for all million some residents of this system that use this water and wastewater system every day. Um, I think that we need to look at, we need to look at all those things. And just because there's unanswered questions, I think the recommendation for E is to look at all those unanswered questions with another task force. So shutting that down because we don't know the answers, we'll never get the answers. So I think we have to keep looking for those answers and working on the solution. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have Ms. Reed. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for this opportunity to speak. And also I'd like to echo um, fellow task force members in thanking the public who have come to our meetings when we were in person and who have participated online. This has been extremely helpful. Um, we've heard your voices and appreciate your comments. Um, this is a couple of things that I want to mention. Uh, we talked about the recommendations that uh, were put forth by WSP in the report. And then yesterday is when I saw the recommendations, the draft recommendations that you circulated, Mr. Chair. And um, actually, I was kind of confused about how to reconcile both of them. Uh, and I would like an opportunity and like to recommend that we are able to um, respond to those draft recommendations in writing to you before we take any action on those, given that we just received them yesterday. It'd be good to, uh, to uh, look at them in relation to what the WSP recommendations were and that type of thing. But in just reading the, rec the draft recommendations that you sent around yesterday, um, something popped out to me. And um, it was a, a phrase or a sentence that said, for those, for, let me see. Um, it said, well, the, the working group may not, may or may not choose to specify the exact composition of the authority's board. We recommend that a simple majority of the board be chosen by city officials to, to respect the city's ownership of the water and wastewater system. And I think we also have to respect, no, I don't think, I be sincerely believe that we have to re respect who the system serves and uh, who is actually paying the bills in order to operate the system. And uh, at this juncture in time, the majority of those customers who are paying the bills don't live in the city. And I think we need to, you know, really, before we come up with the composition and who's getting the majority, consider all the things that need to be respected. And I think who the majority are, who uh, residents are, um, need to be considered as well. And in that, always consider, you know, income issues and equity issues. Um, and that, that that's an issue for everyone everywhere. And there should be a serious consideration in um, making sure the proper representation on at whatever the governing body is is. Um, 
also, the, I'm only going to make two more comments. The second comment has to do with reading some of that correspondence that we received from um, the public. It seems like privatization is equated to um, regionalization. Well, if we regionalize, it automatically means that we're trying to uh, somehow condone privatization. And for that to happen, there would have to be an appetite by the majority of the elected officials to um, have a privatization relationship. And that has not been mentioned in any conversations that have uh, occurred regarding this matter. Um, and so, you know, um, the, the similarly situated utilities, um, as have been mentioned, WSSC Water is a regional utility and it has not been privatized in 105 years. It is publicly operated. Um, and the third thing is that, um, you know, I was one of those people who was probably going to vote early to go straight to E. And I will definitely admit that that was not a good idea. Uh, we needed this process to go through, raise these issues of concern um, before uh, going into a, a vote for a, a, a regional governance model. I still think that it is probably the best option, but because of the threshold issues that uh, that exist, we, I agree also with comments that have been made that we need to get those answers. And before we get, before we rush into doing anything else, I think in the interim, we want to ensure that the system is run well, um, that the status quo is not an option. Uh, we want to you know, do something that will improve the current status. So that might mean um, creating uh, some sort of, a, another sort of agreement or a compact or whatever you want to call it that would um, ensure that uh, the issues of effective, effective operations are actually um, shored up and also how to deal with issues of concern that um, come up between the county and the city. And um, so I'm a, in agreement for doing something like that before we get into, you know, actually separating and making new organizational structures. I think that, that doing that before there's a recommendation on the table will cause more um, confusion and harm than it will help because some of those things may need to be reversed once the uh, real recommendation is um, put on the table and voted on. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And next we have Dr. Summers. Thank you, Chairman Henry. Um, and thank you to all of the uh, public commenters that we've heard from. Um, and to my fellow task force members, I appreciate uh, the comments that I've heard uh, from each of you so far. Um, I believe at the last meeting, I expressed my reservations about uh, option E because of all the threshold issues. And I believe we uh, still have not uh, address those as has been uh, explained here. But at the same time, uh, I recognize that the status quo is not working as we have heard. So we definitely uh, need to take steps to address the various operational and planning issues identified in the new gen report which the city and county commissioned prior to the formation of this uh, task force. And I think uh, the planning aspects are of particular concern to me. As an uh, environmental engineer, former secretary of the environment in Maryland, I'm very aware of all of the environmental risks 
facing our water systems. And uh, we really need to step up our game as a region in overseeing, managing, and planning uh, how to address those risks going forward. So uh, I believe that we do need to take a more regional approach in our management of this system, but I think we absolutely need to address the kinds of issues that have been identified in unanswered questions. So I'm in favor of uh, forming a city county advisory committee as soon as possible to work with the city and the county to improve upon our current intermunicipal agreements and make sure that we are properly uh, addressing issues. And in the meantime, I think we do need to take, as some have said, a much deeper dive on uh, the uh, development of a, some kind of a regional uh, governance structure to make sure that uh, the city and the counties, because there are multiple counties that uh, basically are sending water into the city reservoirs, and so we need to be working together regionally uh, to address the issues and uh, plan for the future. So immediately start up the city county water advisory committee, uh, strengthen our current intermunicipal agreements while we take the time and put the effort into fully evaluating uh, the um, fully evaluating the benefits and, and mechanisms for a, a regional authority. And I would say that um, the models that we've heard so far uh, are not perhaps right for the Baltimore area. I think we need to charge the um, group looking at the uh, regional approach with making sure that um, they are considering all options and that we do not uh, necessarily have to go with one of the uh, option E models that we've heard about so far. And uh, one uh, possibility there is some kind of a structure uh, like a um, watershed uh, compact commission, which we have in um, the Potomac, we have in the Susquehanna Basin, we also have in the Delaware Basin, but we need to have some overarching cooperative effort amongst all the parties. So I think we're going to get into that in more uh, detail further into the meeting, but I think those are uh, key things we want to do, but bottom line is we need to have this uh, working group uh, set up and charged with fully evaluating the issues and give them the ability to make recommendations that serve the citizens of the entire Baltimore region uh, the best that uh, we can. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, then I believe next we will go to Mr. Barr. Yeah, I won't take the time to uh, restate some of the very valuable points that have already been made, uh, but I do want to uh, say this, and I did give this input to the consultants. Uh, I think uh, our state government has a very important part to play in resolving some of the issues that are on the table. And I just wanted to make that a, a, a statement of record because I did give that feedback to the consultant. But unfortunately, when I look at both the consultant's recommendation and uh, the chair's uh, proposed recommendation, uh, the state government is left out. 
And I would like to see the same kind of uh, strong representation from the state as we have on this task force, as far as resolving some of these issues. Uh, yes, there are issues. Uh, I think we need to come to some sort of agreement as far as our recommendation, how we move forward to address these issues. Uh, I, I, I do think we do need to move forward, not backwards as far as, uh, uh, as, far as uh, th I think the consultant has outlined some things that allow us to move forward. And hopefully this group can enhance uh, the points as far as how we move forward and how we move forward uh, in, a, in a fairly quick manner. And I think somebody, I think Dr. Summers mentioned uh, the immediate formation of some sort of group to start uh, analyzing some of these problems. So that's all I have, Mr. Chi. I, again, I won't, I won't take the time to restate uh, the good points that have already been made, but I do think that the state has a, I do think that the state government has had a very, has a very valuable role to play in whatever path we take. Thank you, Mr. Barr. And uh, I, I will take this opportunity to say that I agree with you 100%. And uh, if that was not explicit enough in uh, what was circulated, that was my omission. Um, that, was, that was the result of rushed copy editing. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm happy to, to take some suggestions from the commission on how to rectify that as we move forward. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, and next, uh, Ms. Medicus. Thank you. I don't know that I have a lot of specifics to add. <clears throat> I think um, everybody's made very good points, both on the task force and the public comment. And it, I do wanna state for the record that as somebody that is not entrenched in city or county government or in any type of specific water, wastewater type operations, and as a representative of the state, kind of looking at it from a much higher level maybe, there are some things that strike me, that I guess bother me a little bit on some level that I would like to take this opportunity to address. And one of those is, the fact that I, I think that the members of this task force are all very intelligent and they bring very unique perspectives. And I don't feel that anybody is being forced into picking a decision that they may not be supportive of or that they're not informed about. I think that everybody is both public comment and on the task force is very clear about pushing back if they have issues, if that were not addressed and that we need to move forward. And that's very important to me to make a comment on the record. And then also what kind of bothers me is a lot of the people that are making public comment feel that what they're saying has not been heard and not been addressed as part of this process. So I believe that we have been hearing what people are saying, I think we've just kind of gotten to this point where we're kind of stuck moving forward. And a lot of what's coming up in the public comment and what some of the task force members are bringing up are details that I think can't really be addressed until a bit further on in the process. And I think a lot of them do come up in the threshold issues that are kind of giving pause to moving forward with option E. And I will speak for myself. It is definitely disappointing to have gone through this process with hopes of having some tangible path forward that everybody feels happy with that we can reach the goal where we want to be. Um, and that is frustrating, but that's that's life and that's part of the process. And so, I think that kind of where we are ending up and we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there is the best we can do under these circumstances if we keep pushing um, these important issues. And I think that we will still have the right answer rise to the top. We will look at the, you know, we have to work with the intermunicipal agreements because that's the only path forward that we have that is workable. And if we have some sort of entity higher up that can help make sure that everybody's maximizing what they're supposed to do and what they can do, 
maybe we can make some strides forward and we can see how far that can get us at the same time that we're working through those threshold issues. So I think what we need to focus on is those higher level details for how we move forward to get where we eventually need to be. So I, um, I thank you very much for including me and it really has been an honor and I look forward to what we can accomplish. Um, it's just a long game and not a short game. So I think that's what we're looking at. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Senator McRae. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and um, thank you to each and every one of the task force members and the uh, community that put forward their public testimony. I think that I just wanted to lean in, Mr. Chair, I've expressed some of my frustrations um, uh, to yourself, but I think that for me, it was more just about process, and some of the process is not something that I'm used to dealing with. Um, on a state level, uh, when we have consultants, when we have staff, they're working in coordination with the respective body to kind of push that out. It caught me off guard very much when I see a body of work that's put out, um, even if it's recommendations from the consultant, typically the people on that respective body got notice prior to it going out. I'll tell you, I heard from advocates at two o'clock and I didn't know it went out until 10 o'clock from that standpoint. That's disturbing to me because at the end of the day, it can be misconstrued. There can be a misconception that this was a body of work that I, I was uh, putting forward to when that wasn't the case uh, from that standpoint. So you find yourself do, doing more explaining than you should. And I think that this was the temperature even at the start of the meeting. I'm used to when you, uh, when you have meetings, being able to have a certain amount of public notice or things of that nature going on the website so that people can follow and I just wanted to say I'm super accessible. So if folks are have questions about what they think process should look like, my phone is always operable and my email, I answer my own email. So I was always, the process was very, very big for me. Then I looked at House Bill uh, 843, which we passed last session. And when I look at House Bill 843, Mr. Chair, I think about what our direction or what we was put forward in order to do. And when I took a tour of Back River, when I took a tour of Patapsco, like the employees very much concerned me. I felt like the folks weren't making enough money. I felt like we weren't putting ourselves in position to be able to have good retention and, and the training piece of it was a missing component. And those are things that I would have liked to deep dive in because I thought that that was a very, very primary problem to me. I thought that that was one of the primary reasons why our health and safety was impacted because when talent uh, grows, they went off and sought new opportunities and we didn't have that strategy uh, from, that, from that piece of it. So I would have liked to seen how do other models dig into those specifics, but I, I can't say that I have. Other task force, force members may say that they did, but that just wasn't here. I'm a, I'm a double down on uh, task force member Powell's comments in reference to history. Um, this was new to me. This wasn't the space that I shared or went to school and things of that nature for. So most of the history I heard was when the adjacent jurisdictions signed agreements versus how did this start? What were some of the things and components to be able to put together for something that's to come to fruition um, uh, from this piece of it? What was the dollar amount that was put forward by the city? What is that dollar amount equal into 2023 um, uh, pieces? Because those are the things that I would have brought up as we're making recommendations to say, hey, this is where the city uh is, is well represented or not represented, but I can't do that because I don't have enough information um, uh, from that standpoint. The other piece is, uh, Mr. Chair, when you put forward some of the recommendations, I do think that the state has a very important role in this. I do think that that is a very, very, but it's very important, especially with the fiscal constraints that not just our local jurisdictions, but our state jurisdictions that the administration has been saying. I know that it said, if we go forward, figuring out how to continue this and the state providing financial support. Let me be clear. I sit on the budget and taxation committee, the administration, my chair, um, the Senate president has expressed that there are gonna be some level of pullbacks. So when you talk about that recommendation, I would say, and what we usually do is say, uh, maybe some financial support or if DLS can staff, maybe if DLS can staff, 
Maybe it's the respective agency that we're pulling in because of those are alternatives that we can place. I don't want to put the state in the box to where they say, no, we can't do this, but also give them room to where they have reachable goals or tangible goals that can be if we do um, uh, uh, decide to move this forward. I want to lean back in because I think that I'm very blunt. I'm very straightforward, but I want to say thank you to my task force members because each and every one of us gave what is most important to us, which is our time. And I think that everybody that gave public testimony, I think it's important to reiterate that they gave their time. And I also want to say to the consultant, while we didn't reach the bar or expectation that I, I would have liked to have seen, I do know that you put forward your time. I know there was a significant amount of energy that went into this. And I do believe that you wholeheartedly tried your best. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And now we will move on to Delegate Stein. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I uh, want to echo the thanks that everyone else has expressed to the public and community members, and as well as all the 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 discussion that we've had with the task force. This has definitely enhanced my knowledge of these issues. They're more complicated than I thought they were going into this, and so I want to thank um, members of the public, task force members, and and our consultants for all the information, all the different. Uh, discussions that have taken place. Um, I guess, Mr. Chair, I, I think in your recommendations, you broke them out between phase one and phase two. So I'll just make comments according to you know, those two phases. I'm good with the, the phase one recommendations. I think they make a lot of sense. I think the short term, looking at the intermunicipal agreements and seeing how we can improve them is, is something that, that definitely should be done. With the, respect to the phase two recommendations, I, I definitely support giving a, or doing a deep dive, setting up a task force to do an in-depth review of the concept of a regional authority, not one particular model of a regional authority, but pretend, perhaps you know, variations of that authority. And I do agree uh, with Senator McCray's you know, comment, the state has a very important interest in this and also with Mr. Barr's recommendation that the state should have representation on any task force set up. However, I, I certainly very much agree as well that key issues would need to be reviewed um, by this task force. Issues including equity, protecting pensions, protecting employees, and other items that, Mr. Chair, you, your, your recommendations have been identified. Um, one particular item I guess I wanted to, or two particular items I wanted to comment on, um, with respect to regional authority idea, I wouldn't prejudge it if no solution could be found to avoid refinancing the city's existing water and wastewater debt. Um, the bond finance market may look very different in a couple of years from now, and it's possible that through some variation of an authority that uh, refinancing would be cost effective. Um, and then um, finally, as, as Dr. Summers has said, I think this follow-up task force or work group should have flexibility in the variations of op option E that it considers. It may be that, um, you know, one version of option E, which is a like full consolidation leasing of, of the city's assets may not work for some of the issue reasons that have been described, but some other um, still cooperative regional approach, but where the assets remain with the original owners, such as the city for water and wastewater, you know, would, would remain. So I think that um, that's why, you know, I really like the idea of a follow-on task force, which may take some time to, to come to its recommendations. And in the end, I imagine that, you know, the legislature would also, you know, if there are any recommendations that come out of the task force, sorry, the legislature would give a full vetting to them as well, because I imagine the legislature would need to approve them. So with that, um, thank you for this opportunity, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, I, 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 uh, I will, I look forward to a future offline conversation about what would be necessary to get the bond market back to the point that it was over the course of most of the last 15 years. Um, but that, that, that's not a conversation we, we need to have tonight. Um, uh, next, we have uh, Mr. Cabetta. And good evening. Uh, bringing up the rear, so I'll try my best not to be redundant. But uh, 
Um, I wanted to you know, thank you for the opportunity to engage um, with, with all the task members as well as the public and also thank you WSP. So what I tried to do was just uh, sort of boil this down to some uh, very essential so I could sort of backtrack and, and, and understand better, you know, what uh, this task force is really tasked to do. And so what we've been engaged in over the past several months, uh, I think is, is, uh, is a conversation about something more than just governance. Uh, this is a, a public health imperative for the entire Baltimore region. So the question that we're trying to answer is how do we best preserve, how do we best uh, protect the reliability of all of the assets, the water and wastewater assets, whose role is to, to continuously provide water and wastewater service. So, uh, you know, in terms of providing this service, I think fundamentally what the system needs are, are people who uh, are uh, are equipped with the skills and the resources needed. And to be clear, uh, you know, I think the world of of uh, all of the DPW women and men uh, who who work tirelessly uh, to deliver uh, this this service. Uh, I'm a city resident. I'm very grateful uh, for for what they do. It's a very difficult job to maintain assets that uh, really are at the end of their life. Uh, they frankly do not owe us any more life or any more service. Uh, so. Seasoned veterans are leaving. It's hard to replace them. Um, and on top of that, there are inadequate resources and aging infrastructure. So this is a very, very difficult dynamic. It's not something that can be resolved easily, even with a, you know, a modification of the governance structure. But whether we're talking, if we're talking about people, resources, and skills, uh, they don't just come when you need them. You have to, you have to go out there. You have to recruit. You have to acquire. You have to nurture. You have to cultivate and, and and then you have to retain them. Uh, so if, if if the city's water and wastewater system has struggled to do all of this uh, under the current governance structure, then the question is what is the governance structure that will allow us to do all those things, to acquire, to nurture, to retain? And how and what is that governance structure that will allow us to do that equitably and, and cost efficiently? So it looks like we've arrived with two uh, uh, two solutions, model C, and 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 model uh, E. Um, as far as I'm concerned, model C, uh, as in the modified intermunicipal agreement, uh, it should be implemented regardless. I don't think we needed a task force really to tell us to do that. Um, and and the way I'm I'm reading the the recommendation and and uh, what you uh, laid out, Chair uh, Henry, um, it, it's it's uh, it's on a parallel path on its own. Um, the draft report recommends Model E, but it does have that caveat, right, of those th threshold issues, which um, uh, which makes sense. Um, and it it goes a step further and says that if those threshold issues are not able to be resolved, we have an off ramp, right? Uh, that is what I appreciate about this this recommendation is that it does provide that that uh, that uh, that off ramp and that opportunity to really do a deep dive um, uh, before any full implementation. I think it's a cogent approach. Um, the only thing that I would add uh, is in the discussion about the water advisory committee slash work group, uh, there should be some consideration given to getting representation or having representation from uh, wholesale customers such as Howard County. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then last but certainly not least, um, uh, we, we moved Dr. Mitchell, uh, to the end of the line to make sure that he was holding still when, uh, when he had a chance to share his thoughts. So, uh, Dr. Mitchell. Uh, thank you, Chair, uh, uh and thank you, uh, committee, our task force members, uh, for, for all your comments. I, I think pretty much everyone said it in, in their own way. Uh, uh, so being last, there's <laughs> not much left to say. Um, but I, I do want to thank the public for their comments and, and for engaging in this important matter. Uh, WSP for all your work that you've done in, in this time to, to get us to this point. I, I, I would echo a few comments uh, that the task force member has made. And um, uh, those comments are that, uh, you know, as we do this work, there are still yet uh, a lot of questions that this fat task force have asked. Um, and there's still yet a lot of answers that needs to, to be clarified. So that 
whether this body or some future body will have the requisite information to, to make a, 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 a well-informed decision, right? And what we know here, whether that's on your, your legal, your human capital, your finance, the equity analysis and, and your operational needs, that there's still yet a lot of uh, more questions, I would say, than answers at, at this point. Um, I, I think to Director Cabetta's point is that, uh, you know, our goal is to continue in this region to provide safe, quality water in the process of that wastewater. Um, and, and that's very critical to, to all 1.8 to 2 million customers. Um, I also think that uh, there is, a, and I know we're going to get into more conversation later on in the, the discussion around the recommendations, but I, I do believe that for us to be successful, there has to be a short, medium, and long-term strategy based upon information that we gather, and um, and, and so that you know those strategies can be well informed that that would serve best for for this utility and for this region. Um, I think to Senator McRae's point and 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 uh, uh, Ms. Powell, uh, a point around the history of this utility, um, uh, we we all have to be grounded in the fact that uh, um, you know Baltimore City has made a, a significant investment in this utility, um, and I know in the 24 agreements and later agreements um, uh, where uh, you have your more regionalization. Uh, Baltimore City residents have invested uh, uh, millions and in, 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 in billions in this utility to, to get us to this point. I do also want to clarify the point from a financial standpoint is that currently right now, Baltimore City is the leading entity that provides fiscal support for this utility, right? And even though, yes, by population, Baltimore City may not be uh, but a third of, of the customers, the customers are paying a majority of the bills. And we have to be grounded as a task force to understand that these residents of Baltimore City have been and is paying very high water bills to get this utility to where it's at. And as we make our considerations going forward, we cannot leave that behind. That history is our history, is Baltimore's history. And we can't, and I would say, I do not want to be a part of repeating the same history that we have seen in the legacy of this region in this country happen here in Baltimore City. Um, understanding that Baltimore City is putting the bill for most of this. We do understand that our county partners we understand that the state partners and federal partners have, have put in, but even the work from this task force in WSP, it mentioned that our city residents are, are paying on average 16 or, or so dollars, if I re remember correctly, per month uh, more than uh, some of our other customers. And we have to keep that in consideration that our city residents, um, this is their asset. And how we deal with that asset has to be in consideration of the citizens and the people of Baltimore who help build it and who help maintain it and who help fund it. And so with that, uh, I'll, I'll preserve my comments as far as the recommendations to the time that we get there. Um, but I just want to be grounded and, 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 and what our city residents in the city of Baltimore you know, have done to, ups, to put this utility in the great space and even with uh, these large investments and in, um, that, that we see now, we, we know that there's many people investing, but we have to make sure that we are grounded in that, that city residents are, are playing a significant ton of money to make this happen. So uh, Mr. Chair, I, I thank you for giving me that opportunity and I look forward to the rest of the discussion. Thank you. Um, I, I also want to share in um, in saying that uh, when this when this process started, I was uh, I was pleased and proud to be in this company. Uh, as the process has continued, I want to tell you all that I am grateful to you for participating uh, in this task force. 
uh, one of the things that my uh, my father was fond of saying is uh, a wise man knows how little he knows. And uh, I am so much more, I am so much wiser <laughs> uh, uh, in the in the ways of water and wastewater uh, than I was last summer. Uh, and uh, I had no idea uh, when when we started this conversation uh, how much I did not know and how much there was to learn. And uh, that is that is just one of the reasons why it is very uh, easy for me to uh, acknowledge the idea that uh, we just, there was no way to do the full amount of due diligence that was really needed to uh, to fully assess this issue to the level that I think most people expected uh, when when we started last fall, um, one of the the things that I uh, attempted to do in the in the rewrite of the of the draft recommendation, uh, and I I say this having uh, listened to a great deal of public comment both through the the portal of these uh, these task force meetings. And through individual conversations and um, and the and the written recommendations that were sent to all of us, um, I understand that there were a lot of people who were uh, very upset that the draft report recommended option E, uh, even though there was an acknowledgement. I think I'm I'm comfortable saying a consensus across the board that we had not uh, sufficiently studied the threshold issues that would have to be addressed uh, to proceed with uh, with with creating a regional uh, water authority. And that was uh, one of the things that I tried to, to change and perhaps I was being too nuanced and I wasn't being explicit enough, but I think that there is a substantive difference between recommending option E and then saying we have to do all this due diligence before we can actually implement it. And we are recommending an establishment of a group that is going to do that due diligence. And if they are able to come up with um, a way to make option E work in a way that benefits the system um, without having the negative impacts that many people are concerned about in the absence of actual um, facts and, and, and knowledge and specifics, if that can be done, then the the groups can move forward with that, but we wouldn't be recommending the authority as much as we would be recommending continued study of an authority option. And then on either side of that, both in the immediate short term, as, as uh, several of you have echoed, there is stuff that we can be doing almost immediately. Uh, that would definitely uh, benefit uh, the, uh, the the improving of operations um, and would be addressing the the governance of the system as well as um, the day to day operations of the system. But one of the things that I would like, and maybe we go back to Dr. Summers for this, or maybe we ask if others have. Um, specific questions or strong feelings about it. Um, Dr. Summers' uh, suggestion of a, a compact commission, I think that gets, uh, I'm sorry, yes, a compact commission. I'm saying that right, Doc? Yeah, okay. Um, I think that gets at a concept that I'm not sure we spend enough time discussing during the course of uh, our uh, deliberations as a, a, a possible option, unless you think of it as a subset of 
um, of, of E, but it could also be thought of as a subset of C. But the idea would be, um, and I say this because, um, and we've, we've talked about this before as well, um, one of the driving, one of the real motivators of this conversation in the first place, um, as a couple people alluded to, is the fact that we have a large amount of customer base for the system that is outside the city and as such is technically disenfranchised from the uh, running of the system. Uh, the decisions for the system are all made by the city, by city officials uh, who are ultimately elected by city residents. And, um, and part of having this wider conversation about government came out of, you know, how can we find a way to get more people at that table? And I, I will, I, I will admit, I, looking at options A through E from the original, uh, conversation and just what I knew about water and wastewater, I did not, um, I was not aware that there were other models that allowed for that level of regional cooperation and participation in decision making, um, other than something like an authority. But uh, we actually had at one of the public meetings, one of the last ones in person, uh, someone during public comment um, had had asked, why can't you just include representatives from the state and the counties um, in the governance of the existing water and wastewater system. And I said, well, that system is run by city government. It's not like we could put members of the, uh, of, we couldn't put county representatives or state representatives on the city's board of estimates, which is technically the body setting policy for, um, for DPW right now. But um, but this compact commission concept shows that that is an option. You can create a separate entity that has representation from wherever you choose to construct it. And you can just change your internal rules so that your agency or municipal utility or um, you know, I, I, as Ms. Powell suggested, you know, breaking, I'm sorry, returning, <laughs> uh, water and wastewater to being a standalone entity. Um, it could then just take its direction from that compact commission rather than taking it from the board of estimates. And the reason why I think that's a very relevant concept and one that, um, should be uh, discussed more is because that would eliminate so many of the concerns that have been expressed about the dangers, the potential dangers of an authority. In a situation like that, there would be no need to um, change the benefits and pensions of the workers um, because they would remain employees of um, the, the existing systems. Um, there'd be no need to restructure debt because the systems would stay in place and still be collecting, uh, the, 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 the receipts and using that to pay debt service. Um, that, so I didn't put this in that draft recommendation. Um, I, in the draft recommendation, I just, shared uh, Dr. Summers' concept as a possible alternative if option E and the Regional Water Authority does not pan out after extensive um, due diligence. But the the more that we've, I've, I've listened to people talk about this and talk about what's important to them and what's important, um, what should be important to us in terms of uh, preserving and advancing the system, 
um, I would almost I would I would want to suggest that maybe instead of proposing a new working group to specifically do the due diligence on a regional water authority, I would say perhaps we should be recommending a working group to look at the benefits of a compact commission versus the benefits of a regional water authority, determine whether there's any reason we shouldn't just be doing a compact, uh, a compact commission instead, and they could then be the ones that would um, work through uh, the extensive uh, and politically thorny um, issues of working out the uh, the actual uh, composition, because that's what's going to boil down to being the hardest part of this is, you know, Mr. Cabetta points out it would be um, helpful to have representation from the wholesale customers. That's a perfectly fair point. Um, you know, Mr. Barr reminded all of us that we should definitely be having participation from the state. Somebody should sit down and work out um, the composition of how many people should be representing the uh, the residents of the city who may be uh, a minority of the current customer base, but who have both currently and historically provided the overwhelming um, equity that uh, exists in the infrastructure that we're, we're trying to work with. Um, so I wanted to throw that all out onto the table now and um, and ask, first of all, if anybody wants to react to that. Um, if not, I have a couple of uh, questions I wanted to run us through uh, in terms of what we're prepared to do moving forward. But first, I'll, I'll stop and see if there's any reaction to, uh, in, to my diatribe. And please raise your hand if you would like to uh, Ms. Powell. Um, thank you, ch uh, Chair. Um, this, I, I appreciate um, all that you have shared, and it kind of goes back to the comment that I made about um, the difference between governance structures and agreements, because going into this, um, the, uh, the current structure as it is a bureau in public works, which uses an intermunicipal agreement. It also has wholesale agreements. The intermunicipal agreement was um, conveyed as the status quo. If we um, stay with the structure being the intermunicipal agreement, um, then we will not have made any improvements. Um, and that's not the case, or there won't be any changes. We won't be able to address these issues. And I think I shared with you uh, and the consultant a table of various utilities that have a municipal utility structure, and they have different models for how the decision making or policy making is made. Um, some have boards that are appointed, um, some just report to the executive and the, the council of the municipality, but there are other models that exist. So I do think, um, and, and then we have the models of the ICPRB for the Potomac and the Susquehanna River Basin Commission, which I think are slightly different because those deal with um, uh, issues not owned assets of any one municipality. Uh, but I think the application is, is similar. So I do think there is an opportunity to further explore for that particular structure um, a, alternatives that would address the issues that were raised in the House bill, as well as uh, doing a deeper dive on the threshold issues 
And I think, uh, you know, my colleague, uh, Yosef, put it so eloquently that the, the crux of the issues, it doesn't matter what structure we have here, if we don't have the people and the resources to run the utility at the end of the day, um, we're, we won't be able to address the other issues and run the utility and operate the system effectively. Um, the other thing I'll say is that when you look at the existing agreements, there is a joint planning function uh, for the city and the county. How it has been uh, implemented in the past and even now, um, and the staffing issues that exist um, are a concern, but that doesn't mean that it has to be implemented that way moving forward. And I think strengthening that existing planning, joint planning function does give Baltimore County participation, and that can be discussed and addressed in an MOU. Um, I also think that in the uh, regulation or one of the agreements somewhere, it specifically says that the city has to provide the same level of service, and I'm paraphrasing, to uh, all of the customers as it does to the city of Baltimore residents. And so the suggestion that um, just by decisions being made by an executive of the city of Baltimore doesn't mean that customers uh, are not getting or should not be getting the same level of service because it specifically says that they should. And I think anyone that manages a utility, a regional utility, knows that that is the uh, that is a, a primary imperative that all customers of the system should be provided the same level of service and equity. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, reactions or questions? Ms. Buckler. Um, a couple of things. I I agree with Keisha that customers should get the same level of service. I, I don't think they are in the way that the system is set up. Um, you know, to give a, a very brief example, if you have a problem with your meter attached to your house, your water meter, it's spinning out of control and your bill comes in and it shows that you used a zillion gallons of water. You call the city to get it corrected. You got to go through a whole bunch of stuff to get that to happen. Then if you live in the county, then you have to call the county to get the sewer side of the bill corrected because it's not the same billing system and you get billed separately and you have to go through a whole nother queuing of government employees to get that fixed. You get very frustrated if you're a county resident trying to get something like that taken care of. Um, I've also got numerous case studies I could give on what happens when a county resident calls in for a broken, a broken water main, a leak in the water main. Um, that it's just not the city's priority, and it it becomes the county's priority then to go do the secondary things around that broken main, like salt the roads in the winter because the leak is still happening after the residents have called it in multiple times and then gone to their state representatives and gone to their county representatives who have also called it in, but it's not hitting the priority list. So the customers are not being treated the same. Um, on the joint planning, that that's not happening. I think we could have all the MOUs in the world and it's not happening. Um, the consent degree, what, what I've asked of MDE at this point because of those kind of issues is we're having regular meetings with MDE and my counterparts in Baltimore City to sit in the same room because we're being held to two different consent decrees, which are giving us two different sets of priorities. So when we get to the city county line, we have different priorities on how to fix these problems. If there's a sewage overflow at the city county line, sewage runs downstream. It's going to run down into the streams in the city, even if the brakes on the county side. It's going to run into the city streams. That's going to impact the environmental quality of life of the city residents. 
but it's not the city's priority in their consent decree to fix lines at the city county border. So we have these differences of, of regulation and regulatory authority over us, giving us different directions. We have different citizens we're serving. It's the same system. The pipes connect to each other. The environmental issues affect residents living on both sides of the line. There's no fence that keeps sewage additions on one side. There's no fence that keeps the people on one side or the other. They go back and forth. They work in the other jurisdiction or they send their kids to daycare in the other jurisdiction or vice versa. The, the people are crossing the lines. The issues are crossing the lines. The customer service, the regulations are not crossing the lines, which is a governance issue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, but before I move on to uh, Dr. Mitchell and then Ms. Powell. I, I, I will I will note that uh, you uh, again, I just learned something uh, new because I had never um, thought about the fact that if you're a county resident who has a problem um, with their with their meter that you're going to have to deal with the city for the water part and the county for the sewer part. Um, but I'm not sure that that counts as, the city not treating all customers the same. Um, that that's just an additional problem that county residents have because the county has a separate system for dealing with sewer, and that so that's that's kind of a separate issue, but admittedly one that could be addressed by an authority. Um, but I did want to definitely say that uh, as a former city council person, um, I got plenty of city residents who are convinced that the city is not prioritizing their water main breaks either. So um, that's just a system issue. Um, that's not that's not something that's worse for the county uh, residents than it is for the city. Um, Dr. Mitchell and then Ms. Powell, and those are the hands that I see right now. No, thank you, oh, Ms. Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, for the acknowledgement. I, I think I, I concur. Uh, you know, uh, you know, especially when you were looking at in, in the short term. You know, I know as a, a past director of DPW, I can tell you my concern was to provide uh, top-notch service to all customers, um, uh, whether city, county, or anywhere. Um, and and I think that's how I've been since. Um, you know, I, I, I've been in this work uh, for, for many years. I, I, I also think that, uh, you know, there are, you know, other uh, committees that are, are doing the work of, of the billing system. I think to Assistant Director Buckler's uh, point, um, uh, uh, and I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but I think that there's uh, committees that are, are working on those things. I, I, I think when we're looking at this utility in the short term, um, there are some quick things that, that we can do. And when I know we will outline some of that within the structures that we have to make the immediate impact that is needed. Um, is, is there other uh, uh, considerations that we may? I think that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, there, there needs to be a little bit more discussion on what that model looks like. Um, I, 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 you know, I believe that, um, you know, there, you know, there have all been, all, always been interest on the cities, the counties side to, to provide the best service and to provide re, reliable water. Uh, where, where that, I, I, I guess, where we will make that recommendation, I, I think it's, it's critical that we take a step back and, and, and understand that there's, you know, a lot of work that is being done. There is a lot of work that, that needs to be done. And, and unfortunately, this this task force doesn't know of that work. Um, and, and my concern is that, you know, with some of that work being done, I, I know when I was director, I met with the county, we met every month and we worked through many of these challenges that that are that that Ms. Buckner uh, mentioned and that there's still yet work to be done. Um, so there are our avenues that these discussions are taking place. And there's been tremendous progress. And I think Ms. Buckner can, can, can attest to that uh, with uh, being, being able to do some improvements. Uh, 
that will yield uh, great results for our customer bases and, and making sure that we improve the reliability of the water, I think to, to Director Cabetta's point. So all that to say is, um, I think we haven't had enough time to take in consideration the work that is being done so that we don't create these redundancies and cause more challenges um, um, than um, our unintended con consequences um, in, in making uh, decisions without the full scope of what's being done. Okay, thank you. Um, any other comments or questions? I'm seeing no other hands up except Dr. Mitchell's. Oh, Dr. Summers. Thanks. Um, do you want to have Dr. Mitchell go first or me? Oh, no, he. I was just teasing him because he hadn't taken his hand down from before he spoke. <laughs> oh, OK, thank you. Well, I think um, it's very encouraging to hear that a lot of progress is being made. And I certainly uh, would like to see that progress. I think that um, as Dr. Mitchell just mentioned, we haven't really taken the time to dig into that. And that's where I think that the recommendation of creating this uh, city county uh, committee to review the situation and make sure that all the steps that do need to be taken are being taken and help to define a priority list and make sure that uh, the public and all of us uh, are aware of what's going on there. As far as the uh, regional governance goes, I think, I still think that is very important because as many people have said, it is in fact a regional system. And um, I think that not only are there uh, physical, uh, say infrastructure assets, but there are environmental assets in the watershed, the pure water, coming down needs to be kept that way in the reservoirs. The watershed uh, boundary managed by the city is less than 10% of the entire watershed uh, into our reservoir system. And to address issues going forward, uh, to make sure that this water supply is safe, clean, sustainable, not only for current residents, but future residents. We really need to look at this system uh, more holistically. That's why I would uh, still support moving forward with a professional working group to evaluate these different threshold issues. And with all respect to the chair, um, I did uh, suggest that a compact commission could be a possible solution to uh, resolve some insurmountable threshold issues. I, I'm not comfortable saying we should go straight there right now. I think we need to look at um, we need to look at the big picture and make sure that uh, we keep an open mind and consider uh, other possibilities than just a strictly traditional uh, option E. But um, so, you know, uh, there are a lot of details to be worked out here, but uh, I truly believe that we do need to look at the system uh, regionally, and we do need to involve everybody, not only in managing the system, but in recognizing their responsibility for the system, because county residents have a great responsibility to take care of the watershed and make sure that clean water is delivered. And they have a great responsibility to make sure that their sewage is being properly uh, 
accounted for, handled. So as Ms. Buckler said, it isn't when a spill occurs going down into the city. So there are a lot of issues I think we still need to look at. And so um, I don't think we should short circuit uh, this process. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I see Dr. Mitchell's hand up again. Yes. Um, and before I recognize you, I just want to make certain that no one else from the task force who hasn't spoken yet um, has a hand up. Sometimes it's a little hard to see them on the smaller profile pics. So I think uh, we're good. So Dr. Mitchell. Yes, I, I if, if, if you don't mind, uh, uh, Chair, and, and through the Chair, uh, to former Secretary Summers, uh, just want to clarify his comments um, and the fact that um, I, it sounds like uh, uh, Ms. Summers, or Dr. Summers, that uh, that you are looking to create, uh, to establish a city county water advisory commission for this short term to, a, to, a, to get a full assessment what's been done and then um, uh, what could be done within the current structure as, uh, as this committee or some other committee look to understand all those five thresholds that was identified, legal, human capital, finance, equity, and operational uh, to see if those thresholds are met and if there's some other alternative regional structure that could be had if those thresholds are met. I just want to just get clear, clarity on, on, on Dr. Summers' comments. Well, I, I know that he was suggesting the city county advisory as part of the short term. Um, I, I, I don't think it would be fair to attribute the details of the um, uh, the the working group and its uh, committees and threshold issue. Um, I, I wouldn't attribute that to just Dr. Summers, because <laughs> um, a lot of that was um, already in um, you know what WSP had been working on and what we've gotten from uh, the uh, you know the advocates. You know, a lot of people had been talking about what the threshold issues were, but um, I I think, and I'll ask Dr. Summers if I misunderstood this. He was a he was proposing the Comcast Commission as an option if regional authority did not pan out. Um, and what I was suggesting at the beginning of this particular conversation here was maybe we should um, make the the next level of study more more you know more this or that as opposed to does this work if not then this um, because it may make more sense to be um, comparing and contrasting the regional water authority model and the combat Commission model throughout the entire analysis rather than start looking at compact commission because regional authority didn't pan out. Is that, um, Dr. Summers, is that a fair encapsulation? Yeah, I, I believe so. And, and I would just like to say to clarify Dr. Mitchell's question, I was not thinking that this advisory committee, which I would like to see stood up as soon as possible, would evaluate every one of those issues. But they would need to take a look at what the issues are, and prioritize them, and work with the city to, and the counties to make sure that things were put on some kind of a priority list and, and uh, issues were were resolved, and that's not to say that the city and the county already aren't already doing a lot of good things to fix this. That isn't what I meant. Um, I'm just saying that uh, I think it deserves a, a broader look. I mean, we just heard about some of the shortcomings in in planning, and 
and so forth. So I would just like to see those things addressed. And I think that that advisory committee uh, can start working right away while we stand up uh, some kind of a working uh, group to evaluate uh, the longer term issues the way uh, Chairman Henry's uh, proposal was, was laid out. Did that answer your question, Dr. Mitchell? Uh, yes, yes, Dr. Summer, that was very helpful. Thank you so much. Okay, any other comments or questions? All right, seeing none, um, I wanted to next go to address uh, an issue that Ms. Reed raised um, in our um, in our round robin at the beginning, um, where she had asked if we could um, put off making specific decisions tonight so that there would be an opportunity uh, to respond to the draft recommendation that was circulated um, in writing. And uh, what I wanted to ask is, uh, is are there others who feel similarly? Um, should we try to get some basic broad concepts nailed down tonight and leave specifics for um, written back and forth uh, that can be shared before the final meeting at the end of January? Um, or are others generally comfortable with trying to come to some type of at least uh, draft recommendations tonight? Um, does anybody feel strongly one way or the other? Uh, okay, seeing, see, uh, Ms. Powell, then Mr. Moran. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would. All right, uh, I, 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 Pat, actually, it was Ms. Powell and oh, then sure. Mr. Moran. <laughs> I'll, I'll yield to Mr. Moran. Okay, now it's Mr. Moran, then Ms. Powell. Thank you, Ms. Powell. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, I would prefer to uh, defer. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Powell? Likewise. Okay. Um, is there anybody? Uh, the, okay, so here's here's what I'm going to throw out then as um, a sort of a framework. If we don't actually vote on a draft recommendation tonight, uh, then here's what I'm here's sort of what I think we're going to need to do. Um, first of all, uh, what what I'll ask WSP to do is post the draft recommendation that I circulated over the weekend um, on the website so that everybody can see what we're looking at. Um, and then I think we need to establish a pretty strict deadline on when people are gonna get comments back. Uh, and by back, what I would say is circulate comments to the group, including WSP, so that everyone can see everyone's um, comments as they come in. Um, is everyone comfortable getting uh, those comments in by uh, close of business on Friday? Uh, Pat, I'm sorry, Mr. Moran, you still have your hand up. I just want to check to make sure. Okay, Dr. Mitchell. Uh, yes, thank you, Dr. Ch uh, Mr. Chair. Are, are we uh, providing comments to uh, the draft recommendation number three? Yeah. And or are, are the recommendations within the re uh, draft report? Just want to make sure I, I, I'm clear. I, I would suggest that for, um, for copy editing purposes, let's work off of three. But if you want to allude to um, concepts or specific wording from 
the draft report, feel free to include that. But act as if we are rewriting draft three into draft four. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is uh, do I have uh, do I have consent on that schedule? Everybody get uh, comments back by the end of uh, by close of business Friday. Um, then what I will um, say is over the weekend we will integrate all those comments and try to circulate a draft four, which will probably, or I should say, we should be open to the possibility that draft number four um, has a choose your own adventure feel to it, um, where we may, have, um, we may have mutually exclusive suggestions in different places. And so what, um, what we will be then voting on on the 25th will be um, you know not just voting on this but uh, choosing among options if there are options at different points. Senator McRae. Mr. Jay, can you just clarify how you'll handle, like, let's say that there is some partial agreement. When you're combining everybody's comments in one, you may find yourself with a product that you partially agree with. So how will you handle that, that piece of it? Well, um, the, for example, in the way um, that draft number three is laid out, the actual recommendations are all bolded statements. And then there is other information between them, uh, you know, supporting and justifying. Uh, I think what we're gonna end up doing is just going down the line and taking uh, yes, no votes on recommendations. And um, this is an area where I expect you and Delegate Stein will have uh, an additional comfort level uh, over some other members of the task force because I intend to run that as a committee session where um, if people want to suggest changes to a statement in order to get more votes for it so that um, it has enough votes to pass because it doesn't have enough votes to pass as is, uh, we'll be playing, um, you know, that'll be an available option. Um, but uh, that that would be my expectation is we'll just talk out each individual aspect of the total recommendations um, and go okay. from there. So I, I think I heard your timeline, but I may have, uh, not heard one component. So I know that we're submitting uh, uh, positions to you Friday. You're going to take a look at it, compile it over the weekend. When should we anticipate the document that you're um, with, with all of the combined pieces of it so that we're prepared um, for the next meeting? So I would expect that by hopefully by the middle of the next week, If um, but I'm not going to promise before uh, the end of the following week, because it's a short week because of Martin Luther King's uh, birthday. Um, I would say definitely by the end of the week, uh, we will circulate uh, that. I would like to do it sooner. I would like to have it done as quickly as possible because I want to post it as early as possible publicly, and I want to get it to the task force before we post it. So you're saying the 18th or the 19th? The eight, the, if the 19th Friday? Yes. Then I'm saying in an ideal world, uh, the task force would receive it on the 17th. Okay, I got um, you. But, but if it's not there until the 19th, it doesn't mean I don't love you all. Got it. <laughs>
Just just trying to level set and get my timeline. Up I, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, any other any other questions or comments? Um, if there are no other questions or comments from the task force, um, I would take this opportunity to ask the task force, would you like your 15 minute eight o'clock break, which we have er, arrived at, or would you like to proceed directly on to public comment and forego the break in return for the opportunity to possibly conclude earlier? I would conclude earlier. I would, I would like to go directly to uh, the public comments if uh, the other other task force members are agreeable. I, I think that I think we will try to do that then. So, um, Brian, how do we uh, open things back up to ask people if uh, they would like to make any public comment based on uh, what we have just discussed over the last hour and a half? Yeah, they should be able to uh, raise their hands if any members of the public would like to do so. Okay, Let's see, if we have a couple of hands raised here. Ah, I, I know how to look now. Um, let's, can we start with uh, Jorge because David got to speak at the front end. So we'll start with Jorge and then go to David. Jorge. Hello there. Sorry, there's a little bit of a lag time from when one is made a panelist. So that's why it takes a few seconds there. No worries. So again, so yeah, this is Jorge with Food and Water Watch. Hey again, we're really grateful that the task force members have really been wrestling with the decision for how to move forward. I'll start by saying it's very, very difficult to know exactly what all is being recommended as you know has been kind of acknowledge, I don't know, this like latest draft has been like not shared uh, with us to, to be able to say, you know, with any, <laughs> with any confidence, what, you know, what's in there. We've heard thoroughly what, you know, what every member has talked about and feel that really every single task force member brought up the threshold issues related to a water authority and these legal and economic costs as we've all, Acknowledge could cause serious harm to families in both the city and the county. So we want to be clear because several task force members have really kind of wrongly insinuated that the choice is between status quo and transitioning to a water authority, or at least simply kind of mischaracterize that as something that the advocates want. The advocates have called for making the much needed improvements in the system by reworking the intermunicipal agreements and creating what I'm hearing is from a lot of the members creating a new city and county advisory committee. So we thank you for supporting that recommendation. And again, the threshold issues, those problematic legal and economic consequences are the result of only one of the potential recommendations and that is the water authority. Um, so what's been very clear uh, is that the county wants to have more control over the water and wastewater system currently owned by and built by the city as Dr. Mitchell spoke to. And yet there's been no evidence that an authority would actually address any of the shortfalls facing the system. So we believe right, this task force should not move to any unsupported drastic governance changes like a water authority just because of the county's desire for more control. Again, we understand and share the desire to improve regional coordination and a contract commission dedicated to watershed planning could be a way to really improve the regional coordination without all the issues of an authority. So again, that's why very much, very much asking this task force to reject any vote to support a new water authority or set up yet another task force that is already gonna be biased towards that authority. And we have spent six months, the WSP consultants have spent like round after round of getting asked the same question and sort of resolving the same thing. And it's not 
something you can work around in terms of the threshold. So again, we really are requesting a chance to provide written comment on your draft report prior to that final meeting. But again, we're still hoping that you do not move in the way of any more conversations about a water authority. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And we will um, post the draft, uh, the, the draft, the draft, the new draft recommendation. Um, uh, if, if, if we can't do that tonight, we'll do that tomorrow. Um, I Thank you. think you said uh, David Whedon was next. And he's been elevated to panelist, so he should appear any moment. Sorry, can you hear me? We can hear you now. Okay, uh, great, thank you. Um, thank you so much uh, for, uh, again, allowing us to do public comment. My name is uh, David Whedon with the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Um, by statute, this task force is charged with assessing different governance models to ensure that the water and wastewater systems serving Baltimore are safe, efficient, equitable, and affordable. Yet the draft report recommends a regional authority governance model without doing the proper analysis to determine if this governance model is the best thing for the city of Baltimore and its residents. Research and history shows that regionalization can lead to unaffordable water rates and loss of control over a major asset without showing any of the benefits of water quality or increased services for residents. There's still several questions that need to be answered by this task force before it adopts the draft report recommendation of a regional authority governance model, uh, both long-term or short-term. And these questions include, how will regional authority affect racial and economic equity? Uh, what will the effect of regional authority be, again, on low-income residents? And uh, what would be the impact of the fiscal impact of a lease of the water and sewer assets to a regional authority for Baltimore City and for Baltimore County? And so uh, I do want to just end by, you know, saying that I know uh, Ms. Buckler uh, talked about, you know, uh, doing making sure that there's equity for all for both Baltimore County and Baltimore City residents. And we totally agree with with her on that. And I think the Baltimore Right to Water Coalition would love to work with you offline, Ms. Buckler, about getting a water for all program in the Baltimore County and making sure we can get that. But we don't need a model uh, for Baltimore County residents to have water for all in the same equity programs that the city residents in, in enjoy. And then I just had a, a question for the chair. Will our com uh, will the comments on the, the, the new draft that you re release, will the public be allowed to give comment on that? Uh, we would love to give our comment by the same deadline uh, that you gave the task force members by next Friday or by this Friday. Uh, we would love also love uh, our input on that new draft as soon as we are able to see that, because uh, I think the public should also be allowed to give some type of comment on that draft, saying that now that seems to be the recommended draft of the task force. We weren't able to actually give comment on that. We just were able to give comment on whatever WSP put together. But it seems that this new comment is gonna be the actual recommendation of the task force. So I think the public should be allowed to give some type of public comment on that, ac that actual draft report if possible. Thank you so you, much, that ends my comment. Thank you. you. You are absolutely allowed to provide public comment. Um, I, I, honestly, I, and I, 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 I know that this was occasionally a, a stressor, um, but our attitude has been the public can provide comment at any time about any aspect of this. Um, the I, I know there were some people who freaked out a little bit when we added this meeting and so created a deadline for public comment last week on the draft report. That was not to say you couldn't submit uh, comment on the draft report after last Friday. It was just to say that WSP couldn't assure that it would have time to collate it 
into all of the material that they were sharing with the task force before tonight's meeting. Um, but you can continue to send in, uh, you or anyone from the public can continue to send in uh, public comment uh, right up through the day we vote on the 25th um, on a final recommendation. And uh, as soon as the draft report, the, as soon as this draft comes out, um, you're free to submit comment on it. You can submit comment on the draft itself. Um, you can uh, submit comment on the collated uh, draft number four, which will be where we are integrating the task forces uh, comments. Uh, and that will be available sometime next week. Uh, I can't tell exactly when yet, um, but definitely by the um, by 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 close of business next week. Um, but yes, you 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 are free to submit public comment at any time. Uh, and are there any other attendees? who wish to give public comment now. I am seeing no other hands up. Okay. So given that, um, I think that means we would move on to the final section of tonight's agenda. But since the final section of tonight's agenda was additional discussion prior to voting on a draft recommendation. And since we're not going to be doing that tonight, um, does anyone have any uh, final uh, comments or questions that they would like to add for the group? And seeing none, uh, I will then take this opportunity to thank uh, task force members and the public alike uh, for their participation tonight. Uh, I appreciate uh, all of you caring about this issue, um, which is an important one. And um, we will look for your comments uh, by the end of the week. And we will continue this uh, public conversation uh, I guess, Brian, do you want to go, is there a, a slide we can go back to that has the next meeting? Thank you. Um, our, our, our next meeting where we will have the, make the final recommendation, it will be on Thursday, January 25th at 6 p.m. It'll be here on Zoom as well. And um, the details for that will be posted publicly as uh, the previous meetings have been. Uh, Thank you all very much and have a wonderful evening.